Let's talk about this week's Democratic debates with Michael New, associate scholar at the pro-life Charlotte Lozier Institute. Michael, glad to have you on. Oh, thanks for having me. So last night, there were no questions the last two nights on abortion, but we did see Kamala Harris bring up the issue of the Hyde Amendment with Joe Biden. What did you make of that interaction? I thought it was interesting. I think that, quite honestly, Biden's answer was very disingenuous. Uh, he did admit to changing positions on the Hyde Amendment. Uh, he supported it. Uh, now he opposes it. And he claimed that his reason for the position switch was that there used to be alternative sources of funding for elective abortions. And that's just not the case. I mean, the Hyde Amendment places a limit on federal taxpayer dollars and how they can be used to fund elective abortions. Uh, there are about 15 states they use their own taxpayer dollars to fund elective abortions. But if you live in the 35 other states uh, which don't fund elective abortions through Medicaid, uh, abortions aren't subsidized with taxpayer dollars. There was never any alternative source of funding. So Biden is either just misinformed or just trying to mislead people on this. And, and Joseph Biden last night said that he supports a woman's right to choose, as we, as we just heard in Mark's story there. And he, he said, uh, you know, that uh, abortion should be enshrined in federal law. How is this going to play out in the 2020 elections? I think it's going to really hurt him politically. This may make some sense for him uh, during the presidential primaries because many Democratic voters do support legal abortion. But when you look at the general public, uh, voters are a lot more concerned or a lot more um, mixed on this issue. I think that uh, if you look at uh, polling, uh, pro-life laws, incremental pro-life laws, enjoy law support, waiting periods, bans on late-term abortions. Uh, these are all things that pull very well. So I think his plan to kind of put abortion rights into federal law will backfire in the general election. And so President Trump says, predicts that Joseph Bi Joe Biden is going to receive the nomination for the Democrats. How would this issue then play out if it's Trump versus Biden? I think it'll play out well for pro-lifers. Again, I think pro-lifers are happy with a lot of things that uh, Donald Trump is doing. He's cut funding for Planned Parenthood. He's strengthened the Mexico City policy. His judicial nominations have been good. And on a lot of incremental pro-life laws, enjoy, again, broad support, waiting periods, parental involvement laws. These are all things that Biden is now on the record as opposing. So I think very clearly this could play out well for Republicans and pro-lifers in 2020. What did you make of two nights with the moderators not touching the issue of abortion? This was brought up on the sidelines between candidates, but not by the moderators. Although it's disappointing, but honestly, I thought it was frankly unsurprising. I mean, debates are useful and they can highlight disagreement. And the moderators focus on some issues where there is disagreement among Democrats. They do disagree on aspects of health care, on immigration, on criminal justice reform. There's basically agreement on abortion amongst those 20 candidates. They all support Roe v. Wade. They all oppose the Hyde Amendment. So there's really not much to frankly debate. So let's talk about that health care, though. They did debate health care last night, and Joe Biden, Vice President Biden, did introduce last month his health care plan. What's in there, and what does it say about the life issue? Well, it's pretty interesting that most people are focusing on the fact that Biden does not support Medicare for all, but he has some interesting things about health care. He does support funding Planned Parenthood, not surprising. He supports Roe v. Wade. But what's interesting about his plan is that he wants the Department of Justice to uh, oppose incremental pro-life laws, including clinic regulations, including waiting periods, including parental involvement laws. Again, it's not really clear what a Biden led Justice Department could do because the Supreme Court's actually upheld these laws in the past, but it does show he's against them. And I think that gives President Trump Republicans uh, some real ammunition to use against him should he be the nominee in 2020. Okay, many more months to go before that, though. Michael New, Associate Scholar at the Charlotte Osier Institute, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, thanks for having me.